Hi, my name is Zach Miller, and inside of this course, we're going to be going over how to build backlinks. We're going to be diving inside from the basics of what backlinks are, how you actually go about creating that anchor text that points back to your website, how to choose the most profitable backlinks for your time and effort. You want to make sure that you're posting to the right sites that will, of course, rank your website higher through that trust that is naturally established from highly accredited resources resourcing you as a backlink so we're going to be diving through a lot of different analytics like i said from basically beginners all the way to intermediate and expert how to build those backlinks different types of backlinks that you can build and a whole lot more so if you want to know anything about backlinks how to rank higher inside the search engines which is really the primary factor using backlinks and seo which is search engine optimization then this is the course for you. All right, so before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that Udemy is gonna be asking you for a review very shortly here. And they ask really quick, and it's really not enough chance to get you involved in all of the course. So if you have enjoyed it up to that moment when they ask, then I do ask that you leave a five-star review. Otherwise, anything less than five stars, let me tell you, there's a whole lot more course, a lot more that we're going to be going over. And we're just starting from the beginner side because we need to naturally work through and, of course, to that advanced level eventually near the end. And at the end, Udemy is going to be asking you for that review once again. And that's really the best place to leave that review. You have a big picture, a lot of aha moments, golden nuggets that you heard, a little light bulb going off over your head. That's what this is all about. Then at that point, of course, when you've enjoyed the course thoroughly, you got the big picture, leave that five-star review. If there's anything that you see I can improve or work upon, then again, just reach out to me, let me know, because I want to make sure that every review that is anything less than five stars is improved upon. So that way I can meet your expectations, improve this course for you and every future student as well. All right, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump on in, shall we? Okay, so I want to start off with what are backlinks? I mean, basically broken down, a backlink is in the chain link fence, and I know that sometimes we're speaking different languages. I just wanna get everyone on board. A backlink, quite simply, is your site having other domains, ones that you don't control, pointing to you in multiple different ways, whether it's an article or a resource. It can even come in the form of a comment. So again, there's all types of ways that you can get these different unique backlinks going to you. And the more, of course, authoritative that a website is, and I'll show you what those figures, how you determine that, where you get these backlinks so that they're, of course, the most beneficial for you. And all that really does is that it solidifies, hey, if this website that's really important is linking to you and it has this specific phrase inside of it and this phrase is what links back to you, you must be pretty important. Even if it's just your site, you know, www. <laughs> Sorry, trying to go too quick. Dot site dot com. It could be that simple. It's still going to go back to your homepage and say, hey, this website's important. Now, we obviously, depending on the search engine, Google's a lot smarter, will read the text inside of here and then it'll add more data that it says, hey, you should be ranked for these keywords because naturally these things are topics you've talked about lots of people that are you know well respected within a field or by us period google or yahoo or bing we're gonna obviously give whatever they give credit to even more credit so that's going to be beneficial for you and of course rank you higher so again that backlink is that little thing um, usually it comes in a blue hyperlink text sometimes it's underlined but it's usually a word or a phrase and you click on that and when you click on it it goes over and it opens your browser either in a new tab new page or just 
follows it through. And that's what that backlink does. So it can be sometimes an individual page inside your website, say a blog post or an article, or it could be the home page, which is the page that most visitors, of course, land on. When it comes from these types of sites, though, I do suggest that building backlinks, it's good to get sub pages involved because you want to have content and pages that allow someone who is just reading about some specific thing you talked about to go to another article that's talking about that similar subject. And then of course that leads to better conversion rates. So these backlinks are very important to you ranking. That's what a backlink is simply explained. With that, we'll move on and get more and more into how to build these links. Okay, I wanna explain something a little bit more deeply which is you can build less backlinks and get better results. The way that you do that, of course, and I that's why I use the color to specifically say, hey, if this is talking about um, you know, a specific keyword phrase, say chocolate, then you need to go to a page in your website that's talking about chocolate as well. You may talk about a lot of candies or candy bars, but that chocolate is what you want to link back up with. So you know, you can't be hyperlinking to a page that talks about, you know, sour patch kids or uh, sour sugars. That's not a good thing. So what you're gonna end up seeing is that the best way that you're gonna make less equal more is by simply matching pages with certain keywords. So you're gonna have a keyword out of a phrase that's gonna link to a landing page that is regarding that entire idea. So you may have a normal page here and it's talking about all types of other stuff, but what was most important? What I drew first, all right? That link that you were going to build, that's really the idea of the entire article. Sometimes, most of the time, what I like to do is, you know, I'll put the keyword in the title and then I'll link it over here as well. So when that comes back, it's going to a landing page that guess what? It doesn't have to have that exact title. It just has to have the keyword, the idea inside of it. And again, you can still talk about normal things. You may even want to, you know, we'll identify red as being a conversion. You know, we want to get someone to sign in or opt in. And then you just come over here naturally somewhere in the article. You talk about that as well again. You're maybe building more up on it and saying, hey, here's how this product or this idea can end up benefiting you. So when you have things that match, this is what's known as an H1 tag, your title, that very first biggest you know, idea that you're introducing for your article. Then you have obviously your keywords and you can do things like bold it or put it in italics which is just, you know, saying slanted. <laughs> Can't do that too well on this board, but you have bold, italics, and then also underline. And uh, all of these things are going to identify different phrases or terms that you're trying to highlight for the search engine to obviously say, hey, this page is relevant for this term or these ideas. So you often want to build these things first and have landing pages that are dedicated towards usually a group of keywords. There's a lot of keywords that will end up using what we call phrases or long tail phrases. And it'll combine sometimes multiple keywords together. So your page will naturally rank for all of these things because you know, you're dealing with chocolate here, but then you're dealing with, uh, you know, maybe milk chocolate, and that's just a variation. So again, then you can go, you know, chocolate, milk, chocolate, and there's, there really are different terms like that. People type that in. There is, uh, sometimes people identify that as a different type of chocolate. Uh, it's very unique. So again, the same keywords and ideas can go within your industry and your niche. 
And it's the idea of having these pages that I would almost call a landing page to match with what you're doing inside of here when you create that article and you create that keyword. This keyword should link somewhere definitively that matches with this same idea. And that's how you really get the most benefits and of course rank higher. Thus, not needing to build as many links to rank even better. Less does equal more when you properly align these ideas. Okay, so less equals more, but I want to show you kind of the structure behind your entire plan when you're building your links. Obviously, they are mainly pointing to a specific page, and we'll say that here's a link. This is from a website you don't control. And oftentimes you want it to link to something in your blog, usually what I would consider an article or a post, and it tries to be very informative, 400 plus words. You know, it's not that you need a lot of articles, it's that you need very well written and well put together, maybe even a little lengthy articles. Those are gonna rank and bring in 10 times more traffic. The only time that you really want to have a large amount or of articles that are being written is when you naturally just write every day and then it only has to be sometimes just a few hundred words. But all of these incoming links are going to go to a blog and that blog is then going to go to and whoops, it'll go really over here a little bit more. I'll get my <laughs> myself out of the way. Um, this will be your sales page. Now, what's going to come over here, this is going to be your home page. And your home page may either link to a blog post or something inside. Usually, it's what I consider a lander or a bridge. And I talk about bridge pages but it's just really getting someone whoops um, it's really about getting someone to give you their information at the end of the day even inside your blog post you're gonna be asking on the side here you know I want your email because you want to be able to recontact these people over and over again that's what this is all about you can remarket to these people basically forever until they unsubscribe and if they unsubscribe then they weren't interested in the first place so it really doesn't matter a loss isn't a loss if it never was so you take your blog you're trying to get the emails but eventually you're really just pushing to your sales page we're trying to push all of these links to rank these types of pages and then naturally from your home page there's going to be links that are coming here as well this is really going to drip into your bridge landing pages and this is what you want to rank really overall most people naturally 80 percent of traffic is probably going to come here initially and then it's going to be 20 percent for your blog but what you eventually want to end up doing is reversing that and having it basically be 20 80 because people who are naturally reading your articles and like i said you don't need a lot you just need them to be well written put together informative maybe you'll even record a video as well all types of stuff that you can add for benefits. And we're gonna be going over how to do that for on-page SEO as well. But that is going to really enhance those links. And everything that's coming in now is going towards a page that informs, gets people to know, like, and trust you. They often end up giving you their email. And then sometimes a portion of them will click through to your sales page and they'll end up converting into a buyer and that's what this is ultimately all about because this is ultimately what ends up making you money that's what the whole point of everything we do for link building is all about right it's to make money it's to profit and at the end of the day the best way to do that is like this through this type of structure so when we're building links again I'm going to be talking this is mainly right here considered um, and let me quickly change that up off page all right 
And then this right here, things that are within your control, that's considered on page. So that's really, we're gonna be uh, focusing a lot on this portion right here in links, but I am gonna help walk you through a little bit of this, mainly this portion and optimizing this so that way that we're enhancing everything that's going on here. When these things match, there is a lot less work that you need to do. And that's what this is all about, getting these congruencies, that's what Google wants to see, and all the other search engines, which ultimately rank you, give you more traffic, and ultimately you respond by, of course, creating higher quality content, more lengthy content, more, I mean, in-depth details and walkthroughs or tutorials and reviews. And that's what it's all about. It's gonna be much more reciprocal when you have these two things aligned properly. Okay, I want you guys to simply grasp this one concept. This is one that we can all agree on, all right? When it comes down to content, it's pretty simple. That's king. When it comes to quality, Well, quite simply, got to have a side ruler. That's queen. Content comes first. The quality can improve as the traffic improves. That's why you'll see some of the top bloggers coming back to some of their most researched or most hit, viral, whatever you want to call it. It brings in the most traffic for them. They'll update that. And that, of course, increases the quality but they had to have the content first to start getting that out there. So you need to have content. You need to start with something, just one thing. It doesn't matter what it is. You're just building off from there, one thing at a time, and then you're increasing the quality. You can come back, you can update posts, you can create new videos, you can add new images, increase the text. There's all types of different things that you can do. And in fact, you'll even see that some blogs, what they'll do, They'll even just cross out old things that are no longer true, but they'll simply cross it out. Why? Because that content was indexed by Google and Google is still ranking them for various keywords that are based within that text. So that's even another thing. You will come through and you'll have text that you'll say, you know, here's this. And they'll cross that out. I said dot 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 you know so all of these things are on the fly being changed new over and over you're being updating uh, or updated with Google and the way that Google works is of course they want you to have interactive material they're gonna reward you for good quality content but at the end of the day they reward you period for having content get started with content content is king then increase the quality of those posts on a residual basis come back and see which articles are getting the most push and of course you can monetize and increase the gravity or the link quality and the page quality therefore right we're trying to get both the link and the landing page looking the exact same right has the same links right the way it's optimized we're bringing that over that's what we're trying to have, right? And when we do, that is something that we can build off of. So just always keep that in mind. Content is king, quality is queen. Okay, so I know I've been diving into the structure and things about that, but we're gonna get a little bit more advanced with this structure and the idea of quality via relevance oh there we go so what does that mean well basically what we're trying to do is when we have a website that is say all about art and we have websites coming in and linking to us maybe it has an article that's you know best art you know that that's great that's a real quality one you know it has an article it's on a website that's like that but when you come in here 
What Google is then seeing, especially Google, but all other search engines as well, is they're going to give it a much smaller degree when this is about, you know, uh, we'll just say b-ball, basketball. So again, this is a sports website linking to an art website. Maybe even has an art article on it talking about, you know, Picasso or Van Gogh. But at the end of the day, this is a website that's purely dedicated via relevance to basketball. So the quality of it is of course going to be decreased and it's going to be shrunk down. Google's gonna go, oh, what little relevance that had, we're gonna really tighten it up and we're gonna make it even less. But then it goes over here and it says, you know, here's another art website and they don't really have too much authority, but guess what? Because they're so relevant and they're so niche, Google's going to give them that extra boost because they have to do with artistic, you know, natures of paintings and things like that. And then you have a blog comment or some other link that's pointing from this website over here. So that relevance is extremely important to the quality. When you have quality that is inside of a website that is also relevant, then that's basically like saying that's a 10x for your link and the juice that you're going to get from it and how Google's going to rank you with it. Now, this isn't always going to hold true. Why? Because Google's algorithm is always changing. But I can tell you this, you're always on a safe bet that it's going to be a minimum of a 2x increase when there is relevance to the website. And especially the more niche it gets, you know, if you're, I talk about this inside of my EDU link building course uh, in section and Basically, if you're an EDU website, and that's very rare, you know, having another EDU website linking to you, because there's so few of them, you have to be, you know, government approved, and, you know, you have to have, it's just like, huge, 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 you know, there, there's so much to it, that it's all about relevance, the more that we go forward, because it's people within the same industry and field, saying yes only when you have something that's like a bunch of random visitors like a forum or something and then they go through and then they visit you through that traffic does that become relevant and only at that point does it so it's you know hey for example one place is reddit and reddit's a great place to get some links if you have proper discussion and proper information well-written details about whatever you're presenting Reddit can be that thing where, yeah, it's not really relevant to an EDU or an art website, but through massive amounts of traffic, they obviously see that there must be relevance here. And it's all organic and natural, unique people from all over the world. So they increase that quality by the very nature of other people saying this is relevant by sheer numbers. So everything happens online, especially in Google's rankings of quality via relevance. All right, now I want to talk about anchor text and anchor diversity. So when it comes to anchor text, basically whatever you have hyperlinking back to your website, like I was using the examples chocolate, you have an article that's written and usually it would be in this type of, type of color, a blue, oops chocolate and it may even be underlined something like that then the normal rest of the text will go back etc so often what we need to see when it comes to anchor text right here this being anchor text we need to see a great amount of diversity and most of the time you want to follow what's known as the 80 20 rule and what that simply means is 80% of your URLs are going to be what's known as naked and I'll get to explaining that and the other will be anchored so what naked basically means is it's pointing right to your website and it's either going to be branding so one example would be um, you know my exact name that's branding right there the other thing that may be branding is 
when I link in, like I talked about earlier, just site.com or, you know, we could even go www.site.com, all of those things, HTTP, etc. So those are all what's considered naked. It's either branding right to your actual company or personal name, or it's your URL for your website. And that's what the anchor text is. So instead of it being chocolate, it would be, you know, Zach Miller most of the time. Now, of course, if we're not going to end up using that, then we're going to end up doing our website. Now, the reason why we want this text diversified with an 80-20 is most of the branding is going to be what sticks out the most inside of Google and give you most of your authority. And that's going to be authority that lasts through more updates than your anchored text. Your anchored text can come and go and you could lose, you know, almost up to half of your rankings or more if you have a large amount of your anchored text being a large portion of your backlink portfolio. Then when Google comes in, it says, you know, I don't like the way that you deliver, uh, you know, worked uh, to get these types of backlinks on these websites. I don't know why it's up to, you know, me, Google, and I'm just going to say that all of these previous ones you've made with anchor text, those are nil. So we're going to start off and we're going to, you know, count every one of these websites that got hit with this penalty, you know, and that's going to leak over to you as well. And we're going to count those anchored le le uh, links as nil. Now, the other thing that can happen is if you get to, and this is very bad, do not have this happen, is if you get to about a 50-50, then what ends up happening is you'll usually get close to that point where this is where it starts equaling um, basically any penalty that anyone talks about. So th this is probably the worst setup of 50-50. Now, a lot of companies do build like this. Why? Because it's effective. It works. It's going to rank you up depending on the current algorithms that Google has employed. But when it comes out with a new you know, animal or a new whatever, they always rename their algorithm updates. But whatever they do, if you have anchor text and it's a lot of your backlinks, it's not going to be good for you. That's the basic portion. Now, anchor text is again any keyword so again any keyword so we're talking chocolate milk chocolate chocolate bars uh, chocolate shavings you know white chocolate all types of things having to do with candy and sugar those are anchor texts and oftentimes we want to keep these anchor texts now we can eventually I will tell you you can have a 50-50 but again, you can still get hit pretty hard. And that's when you have close to a thousand pages on your website. We're talking a lot of articles, a lot of content. And why? Because you have so many articles that are naturally, you know, being linked to for different reasons. So all of these keywords are going to end up making a big portion because you have thousands of keywords and you have thousands of organic people who are linking to you with different types of phrases and key keywords. So that's going to be beneficial for you. But at the same time, again, Google comes out with one of these updates and it says, oh, we don't like the way that you did these anchor texts, which is usually what it ends up hitting. Then you can basically count this work as being almost null until a new update comes out and it says, well, you know, we were previously harsh on that. We're going to let this go. Anchor text is where, unfortunately, most of the backlink building goes awry. If you have naked links, branding links, those are basically safe as safe can be because they don't see that as you trying to game the system. Once you put out anchor text, then if you get too large of a percentage, the any keyword, you don't want to have more than 1%. So you can have you know, 50% of all your traffic coming from 50 keywords and they each have 1% each that's fine but again in order to have 50 big terms big keywords that you're building for that's probably going to end up netting you a few hundred well-written articles so again that's what it kind of takes to get that many keywords ranking but that also means tens or even hundreds or even a million plus searches organically depending on what niche or industry you're in but you don't want to have too much of any one anchor text 
keep it around that 1% area and you're going to be good. All right, I want to talk about one thing that's pretty unique inside of uh, SEO and this is what's known as vicinity. Vicinity means you're within a neighborhood, a realm, a distance within another XYZ. A vicinity just means you're near to something. So again, it's just the distance between two objects, A to B. So what we're trying to figure out through vicinity inside of Google and what they often judge is when, say, your website, which we'll use as this star, is getting linked to by certain websites, site A, site B, and site C. Now, what they're looking for is additionally what types of websites are rank are really linking and ranking these websites as well are they good domains or and what is possible are they being black hatted which does happen quite a bit and I'm gonna show you how to research this later but I'm just discussing the ideal um, we're going to be identifying different types of things you know a lot of people will use what's known as TFCF which is trust flow citation flow or they may use DAPA which is domain authority page authority people um, on different search engines may still use PR which is page rank Google doesn't do this anymore but still this is basically used to be the factor of you know 1 to 10 has your website in the eyes of Google well, that's what these do, but it's a little bit more different. Um, if I remember this correctly, Google doesn't like to be nice. The max score you can get on this, I believe, is a 97. Same here. Um, so, again, they're just trying to give you more metrics and quantifications of when a website is good and when it isn't. This may have, um, say, a DA of 50, and then this may have a DA of, whoops, a DA of 60. Now, uniquely enough, you would think, boy, I need to get on this one, even if it costs me money. But we're going to be using certain tools to discover what types of links are linking back to these websites. And if you're seeing that they're having bad things that they link about, you know, um, materials that Google doesn't really like, uh, really these are the big three which is drugs sex and gambling that's pretty much the main three that they say that's a big no-no I mean do they still rank websites for these things yes but there these types of websites have to be on the cutting edge of the day-to-day -day Google changes because Google is always trying to bat these things away inside of its algorithm so if these websites happen to be again since they're on the cutting edge they do get pretty good rankings pretty quick you'll see a number of sites like this and then you'll find out oh the these websites right here they are highly dubious and questionable so it's with that that you end up discovering maybe this isn't the website that I want instead the website that I want you know and it sometimes it doesn't need a lot of links it just needs a lot of big links and now you know here you have one that has a DA 70 so again you want to make sure that these are reputable websites and not dubious bad drugs gambling triple x you know if they have something like viagra or pharma or you know cheap over-the-counter prescriptions or drugs or you know gamble here or online poker those types of keywords are things that you want to stay away from if those are the keywords right here that they use on a website and that they then rank for which gives them their domain authority. So again, it, it's really not just the idea of, well, is this a good, strong website? Yeah, it sure is. In fact, this is one of the top premier ones. You know, say this was only a, again, just another 50. This looks like the best one out of the entire lot, but it isn't because it has these bad terms. These things are gonna end up going away in Google's next algorithm update. Next week, next month, next year, doesn't matter when, these types of websites are here today, gone tomorrow, and I literally mean that. Sometimes you can actually see the history through Web Archive, we'll get into that as well, and you can see these websites, you know, sometimes as little as a few months ago 
were an abandoned website or a blog that had two or three article posts on it. And now it's this, you know, extremely powerful, you know, SEO good. It, on, it looks good on paper, but then once you do a little bit of back research with some of the tools we'll be discussing, you'll see there are websites you need to stay away from because of vicinity. You, by na nature of having this website linked to you, once Google says, mm, we're cutting all these out, that's, that's bad, guess what the next thing to go is? Yep, you guessed it, that. So they're gonna cut that out, and guess what? It's like you never built that link before. So again, we don't wanna end up with big fat zero, so we wanna do our research right, make sure we're getting the right keywords. It's all about vicinity. Make sure that you have a good link network that also has good neighborhoods or vicinities of other linking websites. Now, do you have to go as deep as, you know, and, and these websites linking to site C, what are they linking to and what are they linking to? No, that's a little bit too deep, you know, that's, Google doesn't, uh, and there aren't really tools to do that as well, but at the end of the day, that's gonna be something where overall, when you see certain high profile websites or websites that have good content, you know, fresh updates all the time, you're gonna naturally understand that, you know, there are gonna be some really good websites and, you know, just because of the nature of it, it's a very popular website, it's gonna have some of those bad things too. A, a very uh, premier one that comes to mind is Reddit. And Reddit's kinda like that. It has really good high ranking Wikipedia websites and, you know, um, Gizmodo and all types of things are linking to Reddit, but then you have some dubious ones as well. So you have to kind of take the good with the bad and understand that overall is most of it beneficial to you as long as it doesn't look like it's been gamed or it has, you know, these main terms kind of inside of it, then you'll be okay. All right, so outside of building links, all right. I want to really discuss things that you can do right now that will help improve your rankings pretty quickly and they're pretty easy ones. All right, number one, fix broken links. And the way that we're gonna do this is I'm gonna show you actually a lot of these things, um, first few, are gonna be done through a tool called Screaming Frog, um, basically, what that will end up doing is searching all of our website, detailing different links that are inbound, outbound, the authority of those links, um, titles, any redirect issues, anything that's missing in the site map, anything that Google has but is currently showing you know, a broken issue for, and it'll even solve any of the issues inside your articles and your other pages inside your website, and if they're linking, to other pages that are now no longer existent. So those are big things that you can fix pretty quick and easy. The second thing that you can fix um, is what's known as a redirect chain or chain issue. And I'll just call it a chain. Basically what that means is that you have uh, page A, that forwards to page B, and that forwards to page C. And the ultimate thing is, is that page B doesn't exist. So what you need to do is just remove that link and then redirect it like that. Oftentimes these links are gonna be done inside the HT access uh, file. And it's just gonna look something like, you know, 301 redirect and then, you know, dot, 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 whatever is going on there. Um, Number three, this is a pretty simple one as well. 302s turn into 301 redirects. So the difference between a 302 and a 301 is the 302 is temporary. So Google's not going to push the SEO that's built to these pages that have these 302s. It's going to keep it in the essence that this is going to return eventually as a working page. So anything that you have as a 302 change over to a 301 unless you're actually going to solve those missing pages. If you're not, then again, 301s is the biggest thing that you can do for yourself. Now, outside of that, the broken links, redirect chains, turning 302s into 301s, 
the other thing that you want to do and you'll kind of see this as well it will show up as well inside of screaming frog but it's just another thing to talk about is the 404 errors any 404 errors missing pages that you may have you of course need to correct that as well usually you're going to implement a 301 redirect and say hey redirect it to you know this page right here so you handle these four things these are quick easy fixes you can end up gaining a lot of SEO that you may not know that you were losing.